Hello and welcome to Turn the Page. My name is Andrea Bursler. I am the Executive Director for Wacomico Public Libraries. I'm glad you joined us today. On this show we're going to talk a little about your public library, its, its resources, its classes and workshops, and all the things that it does to serve our community. On today's show, our first guest is Susan Bounds. Susan is a member of the Board of Trustees for Wacomico Public Libraries and is chair of the Friends of the Library. Thank you for joining us, Susan. Glad to be here. Glad to have you. So, for those people who don't know, tell us a little about what is a Friends of the Library group. Well, I'm very excited to be a part of an organization that supports the library with their advocacy and with fundraising for to support programs and materials that the library desperately needs. Um, since the reactivation of the Friends Group about five years ago, we've been able to um, contribute quite a lot to the library. Absolutely, absolutely. So tell me a little about the people who are members of this group. Who are they? Well, our membership comes from all walks in the community. Um, we have um, some young people who join at the book sale. By the way, the book sale is coming up just next week, and we add new members um, <laughs> at that event. Um, but we encourage all members of the community to be involved, and our numbers now are well over 200, so we're proud of that. That's great. That's wonderful. And what do these members of the Friends, what are some of the activities that they're involved with? We're going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, we're going to talk about the book sale in a few minutes, mm -hmm. but what other things do they do besides your book sale? Well, we have book sales twice a year. The bookstore is open um, several times a week at the uh, downtown library, and volunteers help run that bookstore. With proceeds from the bookstore, we are able to um, satisfy needs that the staff adds to their wish list every year. Um, we have our Friends Fest, which is our signature event in April, to recognize individuals in the community who are doing special things to support literacy. It's also a fundraising event so that we have, again, the funding possible to give the library everything well. <laughs> We'd like to give everything they need. <laughs> so, and that's the literacy breakfast, right? Because I think you mentioned Friends Fest, but that's the literacy breakfast. The literacy the, awards breakfast yes. in April, yes. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And then in October, you have an event as well. We just had Friends <clears throat> Fest. It's a recognition and thank you to all of our current Friends members and a request for new Friends members. So members bring their friends. Um, we increase our membership. We celebrate being a, a friend of the library. We applaud the great efforts that we've made in the past year giving materials and programming um, for libraries. And um, it, was, it was just a fun time to celebrate, celebrate being a friend. It was great. We had live mm -hmm. music and food, and it was, it was a wonderful time. Absolutely. Um, so you have the Literacy Awards Breakfast. You have the Friends Fest. You mm -hmm. run a bookstore. Um, what else do the Friends? I know the Friends do a few other things. I know they appear at Third Friday every once in a while. Um, oh, part of our community outreach. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, our mission is advocacy and providing funding for programs and materials. And so the advocacy piece is our outreach um, initiative. And we have done some Third Fridays and plan to do more. Um, we had representation at the Wicomico County Fair um, in August. We go to the Shorebird Stadium and have a table there on table night. So we want to get out into the community, spread the word, gather new members to help us in the efforts um, to support the library. That's great. And there's no age limit for joining the Friends group, right? So you can oh be my goodness, no. <laughs> in high school, you can be in college, mm -hmm. you can be retired. Um, it doesn't matter. You you can join and support your, your friends of the library. Absolutely. And volunteer as much or as little as you feel comfortable doing. And I think there is something for everybody to feel comfortable participating in, whether it's Friends Fest, an event at Headquarters Live with a band, with live bands, um, whether it's representing um, the library at Third Friday, there are just a lot of opportunities for people of all ages to participate. That's great. So we're going to talk a little about the Friends big event. It's sort of their cornerstone <laughs> event, which is the book sale. Yeah. Um, and they've expanded that out now to include 
a book sale and a vendor fair. So mm -hmm. let's talk a little about the book sale first of all. Um, where do these books come from? The books um, that appear at the book sale um, are primarily donated books from the community. Um, we have a team of sorters in the basement who go through those books and choose just the best quality books for the book sale. Um, so donations count very heavily in that um, collection. Mm -hmm. And we do display all genre, all um, um, types of books at that book sale and, and it goes quite well. We, we last year um, made between five and six thousand dollars that we were able then to use toward programming and materials for the library. And as the director I can tell you we do <laughs> definitely appreciate that. So the book sale wasn't enough. You all decided that you wanted to have a vendor fair on top of this mm -hmm. um, which you know the friends are always into bigger and better. We appreciate that. <laughs> um, so talk a little about the vendor fair. Who who is at the vendor fair? Who are they going to see? We have um, 20 vendors who have signed up so far who will have tables in one of the meeting rooms in the basement. Um, they range from nationally known uh, vendors like P Pampered Chef, but also some local individuals as well. Um, yeah, the hear, Ugly Pie say, is going, have Ugly Pie coming. Ugly Pie <laughs> is, is a real hit. We've already had a lot of interest in that. But there, there will be jewelry, candles, um, so this the sounds, gamut. Of, this sounds like a really good place for uh, the men of the world to go and shop absolutely. for their significant others. Um, Christmas shopping yes. will be a big uh, part of this, absolutely. And, as it was last year. And there are going to be somebody special there, I hear, as well? We expect Santa and Mrs. Santa to appear, and children who come with their parents will be able to meet Santa and um, just have a, have a nice morning. And free photos, they can take pictures. Yes, it's not, yes, yeah. yes. That's great. That is so wonderful. And it's a great way to kick off the holiday season because mm -hmm. now tell us when this book sale and vendor fair happens. We begin with the Friends Preview Night, the Friends Only Membership Night on Thursday, uh, November 18th. And you can get a membership there. So if you're not a member, you can, you can show up and get your membership and you get can. into the preview. And with that preview night, it's a 50% discount on all paperbacks, hardbacks, and audiovisual materials with your membership. So there's a real incentive to come that night. Um, starting the next day, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, it's open to the public. Again, friends get a 50% discount on what they purchase that day, and memberships are available for anyone who would like to join. And then on Saturday, the vendor fair went, runs from? Saturday is 10 to 2 for okay. the vendor fair, and the Santa and Mrs. Santa opportunity as well. That's so great. So uh, come uh, Saturday will be a big day. It will be a big day, mm -hmm. but people can get an awful lot of their gift shopping done and they mm -hmm. can pick up a few of those extra books mm -hmm. that they can keep over the holidays to read, pass along to someone else. Absolutely. What a great opportunity. Thank you so much for joining us today, Susan. Well, thank you and thank you for your support of the Friends of the Library and our county library. Thank You're you so very much. You're very welcome. Thank you for joining us. Uh, stick around for, we've got some upcoming events and then we have our next guest.
So welcome back to Turn the Page. We have with us our next guest, who is Wynette Curtis. Wynette is the director, the coordinator for the library's new Project READ program. And welcome to the show, Wynette. Thank you, Andrew. I'm glad to be here. Uh, we're glad to have you. I uh, wanted to talk a little bit about Project READ. Um, this may be a whole new concept for people. So if you could tell us just a little bit about what Project READ is and who it hopes to serve. Certainly. Project READ is a free literacy um, tutoring program for <laughs> adults. Um, it offers one-on-one -on -one tutoring uh, to assist them in the areas of basic reading skills, writing skills, math, uh, financial literacy, and health literacy. That's great. Um, is, is, is this open to anyone? Is this a particular age or a particular type of person that should be applying to be a student in Project Read? Well, they, uh, we um, ask that they be 18 years old, not in a formal secondary uh, school setting mm -hmm. already. Um, and someone that's maybe trying to um, enter a GED program and get their skills up to snuff. Um, maybe someone who wants to go into a job training program mm -hmm. or maybe someone that just wants to find a better job or find a job and they, they're finding that their literacy skills are holding them back. So this wouldn't be the type of program for someone who's trying to learn English? No, okay. no. There are many um, ESOL programs already in place in the community. This is for someone who's basically um, trying to improve their skills to improve their quality of life. So say someone's interested in being a student in Project READ, uh, what do they do? Okay, they can contact the library either by calling our number 410-749-3612. My extension is 159. They can call and talk to me. Or they can just walk in the library and go to the front desk and say, you know, I'd like to speak to someone about um, the reading program. Um, we ask that they have a photo ID, be a resident of Wicomico County. Um, they will have to take an intake assessment, um, but it's an informal one. It's not like a, you know, a standardized written test. Um, and just go through an interview process with me, which would take maybe about 45 minutes. And then we'll just um, match them up with the tutor and schedule their sessions. That's great. So this sounds like the curriculum, what the student will study, is very customized for their needs. Yes, we want to use authentic materials. In other words, we want to use materials that the student would use in their everyday life, that they're already familiar with, newspapers, um, signs, print material. Um, maybe someone just wants to learn how to you know, sharpen up their skills to fill out a particular application. Um, as we've seen, some of the job applications online are quite lengthy and, you know, complicated. Maybe someone wants to sharpen up their skills so that they can read their rental agreement or even apply for services, uh, health insurance, uh, food stamps, that sort of thing. And we would be able to assist them in that. That's wonderful. So they come in, they're, they're given this informal assessment, mm -hmm. and they meet with their tutor. Is there a set length of time that, that this program will run, or is it, does it vary according to the student? It would be based on the student's need. If they come in with a particular goal, and once they feel that goal is, has been reached, they can you know, lead the program. Or maybe they find after they've reached that goal, maybe they will set another one for themselves. The um, sessions are twice a week. Um, about 90 minutes long each session, so about a total of maybe three hours that they would have to devote, and plus any practice and work they would do on their own. So for every student, you're going to need someone to teach them. Exactly. So talk a little about that side of the program. Um, we're currently recruiting um, volunteer tutors. We currently have 10 in place. Um, and the volunteer tutor, the same as the learner, they can come into the library um, and say they're interested in volunteering to be a tutor. They can call me. Um, the tutor would have to undergo an interview process with myself and with Rubab Azim, who is the volunteer coordinator for the library. Um, and after that, there's an initial four-hour training where they would be trained uh, specifically for what we need for our specific program. 
um, materials they can use, um, practices and procedures that uh, would be in place. After that initial training, there are bi-monthly trainings that the tutors would, uh, it would be mandatory for them to attend. And they would be like an hour every two months, something like that, that's, professional development. That's great. Um, now, as far as the tutoring sessions when they happen, if someone's interested in being a tutor and they say, well, I don't, when will these tutor sessions happen? Is that something that they set up with the student or is that something that you would set up with them? I would schedule the initial one based on the availability of the learner and the tutor. After that, when they have their first session with their learner, they can work out their own schedule, you know, that would be convenient for them. That's great. So I'm going to ask a question that I know you have an answer for. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> and that is, why do we need this kind of tutoring program? I mean, these are people that had the opportunity to read in school and why do we need this? Is there really a need for an adult literacy tutor program? Yes, there is a need, especially in our community. There's a need nationwide. I think there, the national statistics uh, in 2016 were there are 36 million Americans that can't read and write uh, basic skills above a third grade level. In Wicomico County, the statistics from 2008, there were 11 percent of the people wow. in Wicomico County. And I think we're finding that there were barriers that many people had. Um, maybe they dropped out of school. Maybe they had health issues that didn't allow them to attend school regularly. Um, maybe it was just their attitude toward learning, the environment they grew up in. But we're finding that there are people with a need. There's, um, we don't know about it because people are embarrassed to talk about it. I mean, these are our family members, these are our coworkers even, these are our friends, our neighbors, who it's like a stigma that it shouldn't be. But the program is confidential, so if they do enter it, they don't have to worry about, you know, everyone knowing. But there is a need, and we have employers in this community that, um, claim they can't get employees, but it's just that maybe the people, their skills aren't sharp enough right. to, you know, be available for the job that they would like to apply for. And and just wrapping this up then, so if they're interested in learning, if they're interested in helping to teach, they can help reach part of this 11% of the population, and they should contact you, and can you give us that information again? Yes, my name is Wynette Curtis. I'm the project read coordinator for Wicomico Public Libraries. My telephone number is 410-749-3612, extension 159. And my email is wcurtis at wicomico.org. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me, Andrea. And we're very glad to have you on the show today. And now stay with us for our next guest.
and welcome back to Turn the Page. So the holidays are coming and if you're like most of us, you have family and friends who are coming in and you're wondering, maybe I need to make a new dish because everybody's tired of the same old thing or some way to decorate the house or some way to use all of those leftovers. Well, joining us today is Scott Mailer. Scott is the Adult Services Manager for the Downtown Library and he's brought some books along that may be able to help you with these awful holiday problems. Welcome, Scott. Thanks for having me. <laughs> I'm probably the worst person to uh, come in here and talk about cookbooks because my wife does not let me in the kitchen. No. But that's okay. <laughs> that's right. I know the collection. You know the books. You I know, know the, the collection. Books. I know the collection. So talk just a little bit about the fact that we still have print collection at the library yeah. and, and what kind of things can people find there? Sure. Contrary to popular belief, physical books are not going anywhere. The you know ebooks are have kind of taken off in popularity. Ebooks are very convenient. Everybody loves ebooks. I love ebooks, but I also love physical books. So we'll, libraries, I don't think we'll ever get rid of physical books. So of course we have physical collections, both fiction and nonfiction. Um, we also have large print. Um, we have books on tape. We have books on on. I mean, so sorry, on books on CD. Um, and of course we have movies, um, DVDs, nonfiction DVDs. So. Whole plethora, the whole range of things. Whole plethora Very of, good. Of, of, uh, of stuff. So you're going to talk to us a little today about some of these cookbooks that right. might help people survive the holidays a little easier. Survive the holidays, <laughs> hopefully. Yes, okay. I know. Okay, so nice. tell us a little of what you've brought with you today. So we have a couple of new cookbooks, uh, ones I've picked out of the collection. One is called Best Holiday Cooking Recipes. Okay. And it is, it's very simple, very easy, basic holiday recipes. Oh, okay. So the novice so cooker, the, the no first time the, the family's first coming? first time the family's cooking, yes. So not too intricate recipes. I think anybody, even myself, possibly on a good day, <laughs> could possibly uh, follow. So, um, yeah. So I thought this was a great, a great one that you can pick up and it's, it's on our new uh, nonfiction oh, rack. Oh, great. Okay, so yep. those are the displays just as you come in the door of the library. Right. Okay. Right. What else did you bring for us today? So I've also brought, since it's coming up the holidays, Thanksgiving. Ah. Thanksgiving Day table. So this has place settings. Um, so if you're doing something fancy, it has place settings. It has plenty of recipes, a little bit more intricate. So if you're a non-novice <laughs> uh, culinary uh, uh, expertise uh, expert uh, these are the recipes for you so if you want your table to look good even if you're worried that the food may not taste good correct you could take this book out and make it look pretty that is correct okay. and we have several of those type of books <laughs> in the collection that's good so, that's very helpful because you know a tablescape can actually make things that are just average taste better right it's, right it's odd yeah, yeah, yeah it's, that's like right. it's all about presentation <laughs> exactly all about presentation. exactly very good so and then to combine the two kind of I found this um, I know you're a big sports fan as I I am game day cookbook all right so this is this has all kinds of snacks and all kinds of stuff so if you're pre-gaming before mm -hmm. the uh, the big Thanksgiving this is a book has all kinds of snacks and all kinds oh, of yeah, lots of college football, lots of pro, pro football. football. So appetizers, stuff to get to kind of entertain the, the guys while women are, are in the kitchen, not to sell. Yes, Sex I was going to say, or, or to entertain the women while the guys are in the kitchen. Correct. Either way, <laughs> either way Very is, good. is, is, uh, is it, either way works. So um, and then I brought this is also new. So, you know, you're going to have family coming in. Mm -hmm. um, Sometimes you may need a little alcohol to get through the uh, <laughs> to get through the event. If, I, I know mm -hmm. sometimes I do. So this has all kinds of drink recipes. Really good. I like. I, would, I love to make drinks, especially okay. cocktails, all that kind of stuff. I love it. So we got this. This is a really great book. Very simple. Very easy. Tells you what to do and what not to do. Okay, so, and I'm assuming most of the things in these cookbooks could be made with things we can find local grocers. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, normal, normal. We don't have to order gourmet from online or. Nope. Okay. No, no. So Great. just, just you know, your local grocery store. Okay, so I'm watching Pack 14 and I see these books and I think this is great. I know I don't have a library card. Right. What do I have to do? Just come into the, to the library, go to the circulation desk, which is the big desk in the back of the library. Um, photo ID, proof of address, 
and they'll they'll sit right up with that's them. wonderful yes, and absolutely. how long can we take these books out if these are new we can have them out for for two weeks i believe and then um if it's a non-new book it's three weeks standard okay. three weeks that's so. great so why would i want to borrow cookbooks because i know a lot of people buy cookbooks what's of, the, what's the benefit to borrowing them well price you know cookbooks aren't aren't cheap even the second hand ones are not cheap um so my wife collects cookbooks and i know even buying them secondhand is not cheap so saving money great recipes we have a like i said we have a whole plethora of of in the collection runs the gamut you know so um all, all kinds of fantastic cookbooks i will tell you i know when i buy cookbooks um which is more than i probably should um, I, won't tell, I won't tell your husband thank you very much for that um I usually find that I will use two or three of the recipes out of the whole book. Right. And while I enjoy the book, a lot of the cookbooks now have stories. The authors relate why these recipes are there or where the recipe came from, which I find interesting. Right. Um, I'm really not sure what to do with the other 265 recipes right. that are in the book. Correct. So people who collect recipes can do so by borrowing the books. Sure. Um, and, and, yeah. and getting the recipes that way. That way and then... Just return them. Just and return. it's free. And it's free. You can't, like I always say, you can't beat free. No, no, you cannot. So if I run across a cookbook while I'm, say, out shopping mm -hmm. um, and I want the library to get it, what mm -hmm. do I have to do to recommend that to the library? So you would just come in, um, go to the adult reference desk, which is off on the left-hand side, um, and just come there, say, give the title. Um, if we don't have it in our collection, we're happy to, to purchase it, put it in the collection. Um, so... That's another great. option. And you, I also looked online on our ebooks on Overdrive and on Hoopla, which is our streaming um, kind of like Netflix. It also has ebooks and plenty of cookbooks on that as well. Okay. So if Wonderful. they don't, if they've got a library card and they don't want to come into the library, yeah. they can get them online as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, so, and then they don't even have to come in. They, and it just, you know, you can, it returns itself. You can return it or it just disappears from your device. Technology. Ah, and wonderful. no overdue fines. you got to love that. No overdue fines. Absolutely no. perfect. No. Thank you so much for joining us today, Thanks Scott. Thanks for having me, as you always. You are very welcome. And thank you for joining us on Turn the Page. If you have any questions or want additional information on any of the segments you've seen today, please stop by one of the libraries. Uh, we have a downtown branch. We have the branch at the Center Mall. And we have one on the grounds of the Pittsville Elementary School. Or you can stop by our website, wakamakulibrary.org. I'm Andrea Bursler, and I thank you for joining us here on PAC 14.